Hey everyone, it's Jamie Broderick. I am the owner of Network Now Connections LLC, which is the legal name of my company. And under that umbrella is Above the Crowd, which have several programs to help you build your visibility and build your confidence and connections. We have a group called the Success Connection, as well as retreats in Florida and New York. And <laughs> I do private consulting with my white glove VIP clients. So today is a free webinar for my audience and Seema's. Seema Alexander is our guest today and she is the go-to expert for business and marketing strategy. She helped, she was the, she was the brains pretty much and the push behind the brand strategy for jamiebroderick.com. Takes a village, right? And Marissa is on the call as well, and she did the copywriting. I don't know if you saw my tweet, Marissa, but yesterday Natalie McNeil from the Conquer Club reviewed my website, and she loved how it looked and loved the opt-in and the visibility strategy, and she said, the copy looks really good. Go, Marissa. <laughs> Go, Marissa. That's awesome. Yeah, and the, the images she loved too. So Terry Yeagle, shout out to you as well. Um, and of course, stylist Tracy from Essentials and Jeannie Ream from uh, Fashion Genie, who helped me get dressed. So, everybody together Seema, Marissa, Terry, Jeannie, and Tracy, and I did the website, jamieproduct.com. So, most of it was fun. The brand strategy piece is so essential. But it was torture. And Seema was laughing at me saying, when you come out the other side, you're going to be so relieved and you're going to be so clear. Just keep going, girl. Keep the journey going. Exactly. <laughs> oh, so hard. Anyway, so I, re I learned that strategy is super important. And I decided I wanted to share her knowledge and the strategy concept and information with everyone at a conference on May 10th and I thought I'd throw her on here on a webinar so those that are coming to the conference can learn about her ahead of time those that aren't just may want to know who she is and learn about all that's in her amazing brain and Seema I just also a thank you to you for all your work so I appreciate it so a little bit about her besides how awesome she is for me um, <laughs> She basically works with trailblazing entrepreneurs, startups, and, and experts. She kind of has the same audience as I do. She wants people who are willing to learn, who are motivated, who are going to kick some butt, and go places, right? Thank and her, she's on a mission similar to Sue Geyer to help a million entrepreneurs grow their business by 2024. How's that for specific? That's pretty amazing. So she lives in Brooklyn, New York, married, two kids taking the train out on May 10th for the conference. Super appreciative of that. She's a former corporate director. I'm going to have to read this part. For a Fortune 500 company, she was responsible for brand and marketing strategy for a billion-dollar business and over nine years of consulting with entrepreneurs and startups. Her unique ability is to create personal brands that stand out in a commoditized marketplace. Because if you're not standing out, it's just you're just part of the noise, right? Um, really good at designing strategic go-to market roadmaps to get you clear on the potential of your own business and to help you create a real plan to help you get there. So she and I are both about getting you from here to there, We're, right? Absolutely. Different, different things that we do, but same audience. Um, wow. You worked and consulted in industries from sports, legal, finance, digital health and wellness, life and business coaching, fashion, IT, and even medical marijuana. Mm -hmm. And it was in Pennsylvania, actually. Wow. <laughs> the new license. Yeah. All right. Diverse client base. Got that. And she's been featured in publications USA Today, Saver Life Magazine, Makers Row, Insurian, Identity Magazine, and also as a contributor for Huffington Post. And I believe you have a podcast as well, right? The Making Moves podcast. Making yeah. Moves. Liking it. All right. Cool. So why don't we start with what is strategy and why is it so important? What is strategy and why is it so important? So Jamie, can I share a little bit about my background first because it leads up to? Yeah, what go for it. it. It's like, I was gonna save some of this for the conference, but I feel like it'll be really good for you guys to understand who I am and sort of the foundation of why I believe strategy is so important. 
Okay. So quickly, my story starts as I was a child. I have immigrant parents who came from India literally with nothing, like zero zilch, zero. Um, they ended up building a small business empire in the Washington, D.C., Maryland area. So first Indian vegetarian restaurant, a grew to three, a travel agency, and a grocery store before my time. Um, what was interesting is I started working there when I was 12 years old. 12 years old, managing, catering, you name it. Me and my brother were sort of in it to win it. With small business, is kind of what happens, right? But the other side of that was over a 20-year span. They started in the 70s. In the 90s, it went from doing really well to surviving, like worse than surviving, okay? And so this is where it shifts for me because as a kid, I saw the other end of what a small business can do, not just for the person who's running it, but what a how it can impact you know your family, the community around you, you know the relationships that you have, your self care. I mean, all of that early on, right? Um, and there are things that happen. My literally everything closed down. My parents got divorced. Four years later, my dad passed very tragically. And and so when I went to undergrad, it was kind of like I just want to know what happened. And I got into these business classes and I started like connecting the dots. And I was like, oh my god, like there was a lack. Of, there was competition coming up that they didn't understand how to take care of. They made bad investment choices. And at the end of the day, there was a lack of strategy. They didn't have a strategy, mm -hmm. like, you know? And, and so initially I took all that and I was like, all right, because of what I just went through, I want stability. And I ran to the other side of like, even though entrepreneurship is in my DNA, I wanted stability. I wanted like corporate, corporate America. I was vying sort of to be a chief marketing officer of a big fortune 500 company. So I got my MBA, I did leadership training, and I was an anomaly in my generation and worked at one company for 14 years. And within that company, I, all I did was business strategy, business development, branding strategy. Um, and I worked for Prudential for 14 years in the financial services industry. A couple key things I would tell you is I got to work on the rebrand of the company, which is very massive. And it's actually going to relate to the first point I make around, you know, some of the barriers of growth in business. Um, and if you think about, if you see the Bring Your Challenges ads in, on television now for Prudential, it's like coming up with what that big strategy is, working with ad agencies. But my job was then to take it and in one of our businesses and say, all right, what does that look like within sales, within technology, within operations, within your marketing? So everything is aligned. Hence, the strategy would continue to build as a, as a skill set for me. So seven years into my corporate career, I started to lean in and I realized that I love small business. And when I hear people who have challenges, I was like, I just want to help solve for them because they're strategically offline and I just wanted to help. So I did a lot of pro bono work, eventually made it a business, um, but never thinking it'd be anything more because I was the breadwinner in the family. Like I was kind of working my way up. I was right under a chief marketing officer right before I left uh, a couple years ago. And then the universe, I would tell you, had a different um, plan for me <laughs> in a lot of ways. About four years ago, I had a pulmonary embolism in between both of my kids. Um, and I almost died not once, but twice in a week. And I, like, I think the birth of entrepreneurship happens a lot of times when we're in transition, when something happens to you, something happens to someone you know, you know, there's something medical or just whatever it may be. And you're like, holy shit, now what? Like you have that, what I call a midlife awakening. And I just realized like over the next year, I actually had a second, I got pregnant. And I took a year later when I was about to give birth to her, what I call an entrepreneurial sabbatical. And I took unpaid leave and I worked on two startups initially. And then I decided to leave altogether. I made all the rookie mistakes, guys. Invested too much money on things that I didn't need because I had the corporate mentality of like, oh, agency work or this and that, whatever it was. I, I worked on the wrong things. My priorities were off. I wasn't focused on profit. I was just focused on operationals. I mean, there was so much that I learned and there was so much I was studying, like digital marketing and online and business model after business model. So it comes down to when I first started in my own consultancy and I kept saying the word strategy, entrepreneurs would look at me like somewhat like deer in the headlights, you know, and they were like, strategy? That's so corporate. Like, so corporate. Like, <laughs> you know, not that not that entrepreneurs sound like that. That sounds like a, you know. <laughs> but you know, it's so corporate. And that actually changed my mindset, Jamie, for a long time. I was like, okay, well maybe strategy is not the word. Maybe that's, that's not what I should be going after. And I changed my entire business model because I felt like my genius wasn't needed in the entrepreneurial community. 
and boy, was I wrong. <laughs> but it took me a while to get back to it because, you know, what I realized more and more as I did work one on one with, you know, many, many thousands of entrepreneurs, I've been like working on their, seeing where they're at, asking them where they want to go. And real and like for me, it always starts with your life plan before your business plan because the unalignment with business models, it drives me up the wall, but we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So then it's like, how do you bridge the gaps? And I realize again, they're, do, they're very busy, very busy, like from morning to night, work-life integration, however you call it. But they're not always very productive. Then they're not always focused on the right things. And that's not everybody. That's not everybody. But that's everybody, actually. Like, you know, when I say it, it's not everybody because there are moments where you're very clear. And then there are times where you're just what I call the new normal. Entrepreneurship is not easy. It's not easy, right? You have your high days and you're like off the chain because you just made this incredible sale or momentum's happening and then something falls through or something happens to your family that throws you off or you're not feeling well because you're trying to take a big leap and your body's reacting to it, whatever that looks like to you but that's that, that is to me it's like what i call the new normal in entrepreneurship like that, that that's what you got to correlate so it goes back to your question. I know that was a long-winded way to answer it, but it's important for foundation and for you guys to understand my conviction around this for me. Um, and it's like I reframed the word strategy into clarity. And when I started leveraging that word in marketing material, in how I pitch myself, right? Um, and there's different levels. I work with entrepreneurs, but I also work with strat um, startups. So the startups understand go-to-market strategy. It's sort of in their language. But for the service-based entrepreneurs I work with a lot or the product base, I, you know, I always say, like, don't you want clarity? Like, what's next for you? Because as an entrepreneur, you're, a lot of people are solo or they're hiring. So that, to me, is like, once I say that word, they get it. And I, you know, and that to me is the bottom line. When you have clarity, you guys, you have momentum, you start to build off of, oh, I see where I'm headed now. Like, you know, and I see what I need to work on and it changes the game. Yeah. It's amazing. When you have a clear roadmap and you know where to work, you're actually end up working less, but doing better. And I'll just add one thing to that. Like, I'm not naive to the fact that we don't learn every day as entrepreneurs, right? I mean, you, your strategy does pivot. I get that, right? But it's, it's the people that I will want to talk to specifically is like the ones who pivot all the time because they're just not, they're unfortunately so confused internally and so unaligned that they're not sure what works, right? So they're chasing versus doubling down. And mm -hmm. I, I want to be able to help you double down this stuff takes time but over time you you will like build and, and build that momentum you're looking for really good yeah. so tell us <laughs> tell us you know the name of our webinar today are the three things that are holding people back from growing their business what's blocking them from succeeding so what barriers are you seeing Okay, so this is, it was very, not a loaded question, but there's a lot, right? There's a lot of core barriers, but you asked me for my top three, right? So I'm going to share the top three and, um, and maybe in Q&A we can discuss others. So my first one I would say is no one knows, a lot of times branding and just messaging is completely off from what you actually do, right? And there's two parts to the branding and marketing messaging. It's, it's kind of like you walk in a room and all your different communities, I always say identify the communities that you hang out with most, right? And if you ask them one question, it's like, who am I? What do I do? And you're getting different responses. You're not doing a good job being clear on your branding message because the best practices, the people who succeed the most, you're known for one thing. And not, and this is kind of where people get stuck. And trust me, I got stuck here too because I was like, oh, it's very multifaceted. I can do a lot of things. But when I started to stick with the word strategy, it started to resonate and more so people would understand what I do. Jamie, for you, right? You're the visibility strategist. If people want to become an expert in their field, go to Jamie. Jamie also has people she can connect you with. She has a ridiculous network. She runs a networking organization in Pennsylvania, but it's virtual. Like, you know, there's other things that you do. You run retreats, you know, but you're a visibility strategist. And when you own that, it, it, everything starts to become easy. A lot of times the messaging, when we don't have that, right, you're kind of like broad. And um, 
a lot of disclaimer in the beginning when you're when you're just starting out and i feel like ilona you're 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 figuring out what your next steps are you mentioned that you were working um towards something right now you know in the first couple of years you know there is no like i always say um, it's a chicken or the egg thing figuring out who your ideal client is right because it's like yeah you could go out there and be super niched as long as you've validated that market and you feel aligned to it but the truth is you're going to learn through experience and since this is business growth barriers I feel like most people have been in business a couple of years. So this is where you can actually step back and say, all right, <clears throat> I've learned a lot here. I've learned a lot. I, I know who I, who I like working with. I know who I do not like working with. And then if you switch the scarcity mentality of like, oh my God, I got to work with everybody because I need to make money or bring money to the table and realize it's way more strategic at this stage to be more targeted, things will change for you. So, and, and it will make your life easier from the copy you put out. Marissa can help you with your copy and your, and your website and your opt-ins if that's the direction you're going or your signature talks because you're going to know who you're talking to. And then you'll be able to analyze their pain points and speak to their pain points because you're the solutions provider for them, right? So I like it is a, it, what I, the solution that I call it is lead with one. That's my, my my name and like and if you're struggling with it i would I'd reframe it in one way marry the market need with your zone of genius right and if, if you don't know what that means it's basically like a lot of people lead with what they believe their audience wants right and and it's a lot of times it, sometimes it becomes like a nice to have product like if you're if you're focused on your nice to have product like I'll give you an example. I had a client in the past who was like a fashion consultant, right? And like she would lead with this, like, I'll do all your wardrobe work. Like, you know, and like not everybody wants that. That's like a very small niche market. But if you focus on where their biggest trigger points are, you know, people need amazing clothes for speeches, for photography, for your photo shoots, for things that like they need. And then you, and then you, you focus on that. And then you start to say, I do all this other stuff too. Like really realize, you know, that's when things start to shift, right? So um, lead with one and marry your, marry your, um, marry the market need with your zone of genius, something that you know you can do really well. That's number one. Any questions, Jamie? Damn, girl. That's just one? All right. <laughs> So, I mean, again, number one is simple, right? Just be clear on your branding and messaging and, and make sure it's targeted to your, um, to the audience that you want to serve. Alignment. Got yeah. it. All right. Uh, number two. Number two. Number two. Number two is actually people are so unaligned with their business models as they're growing and it causes so much resistance. You're talking about growth. Like you're looking at this and you're like, I can do so much. I've impacted so many people already. I'm really good at what I do. All of those things. But at the same time, you're like, you know, I was focused on all this online stuff because I was following Kim Luna's model or I was following Ben Leo's model. Or, you, know, Kim, right? <laughs> you know, I was following like all these other people, but really I like to speak. I like the synergy of that. I mean, the energy of having people in front of me if it's through webinars, if it's in person, I'm really good at that. Or I like to lead workshops and trainings, or I should do things that are like more targeted community based in my store. If you have a physical store, whatever it looks like, right? Stop chasing other people's business models because that's why you're so unaligned. Um, I would, and you know, it really, it, it takes such a toll on you because first you have resistance, then you're not making the money because you're not getting the clients, you're not going out there. You're kind of hiding. You're hiding. Even though you're really good at what you do, you're hiding because you're not, you're not clear on, on how you want to show up. And I always say, like, find the impact in what you do and how you do it best, right? Like, find, find the way that you feel that you can best represent yourself and the results that you can provide for a client that you are serving. So if it's one-on-one yeah. -on -one and you are not good at this, like, group thing, like, it's okay. We can figure out, again, it's all going to come down to strategy and what, you know, your lifestyle and the money that you want to make and the impact that you have and the value that someone perceives what you bring to the table. But you can leverage all that in a one-on-one -on -one model and just charge very high prices. But obviously there's a strategy to that, right? right. Well, unalignment to me, um, in terms of a solution there, I would say step back and do a business audit. Uh, you know better than anybody 
what the heck is wrong? Like, you know, you know, like, okay, here's an area I just don't feel good about anymore, you know, and this is, you know, whatever, this is amazing. I feel really good in my moment, in my energy when I do this, like you need to sort of do that. Right. And then the area is like, I, I got this advice in grad school, Jamie, it was, uh, I think it was in a communications class and I was thinking about another, my next step. Right. And she said, you know what, go interview the five people that you believe are in that in that, wor in that world that you want to be in. So at that time it was like, okay, I was still in corporate. And I was like, I asked three people in different like jobs and marketing that I was like, I love what you do. And then outside like agency jobs, like, you know, like I love work, I mean, working in a, an agency was my dream advertising agency. I just didn't want to work 14 hours a day, you know? And so I started interviewing them informationally and just, you know, their title sounded amazing. And I can't tell you how, once I started talking to them, I was like, I don't want to do that. No, that doesn't sound fun. Like that's what you do. And then, and then on the other hand, there were moments where I was like, wow, that sounds really cool. You do innovation and you do this, like, you know, so you, and, and I think that's what we get caught up in. Yeah. If you have mentors or business coaches or strategists or whatever, cool, like leverage them obviously. But if you don't and you need a place to start, go out and seek the people that are in the models that you believe will be helpful for you to learn about before you just start implementing things, you know, cause it's partly who you are and then exposing yourself to what's possible outside. Yeah. So. That's so good. I can, you could apply that to everything personal and business. It just, yeah. It reminds me of when uh, I was thinking about becoming a teacher when I left corporate and moved to Kentucky. Yeah. I said, I'm going to be a teacher. I love kids. So my husband's like, why don't you work with some kids before you go through that whole thing? <laughs> so I became a Girl Scout leader. I was the troop leader for these little kids before I even had children. That's all another story, which I loved. Yeah. But I decided I didn't want to be a teacher. <laughs> so it was a fun way to figure that out. But that's it. It's not just think about it and then just spend a ton of money going down the wrong path. It's like doing some research and validating sticking your toe in and then jumping in. Right? I mean, again, if you're in growth mode, you should feel like this is the right investment for you because personal investment is business investment. But this is literally, it's a little bit of both because to your point, if you had just gone down that path to be a teacher, you'd have been like, holy shit, I just did all of this for what? Like I, These kids are driving me nuts. <laughs> like, you know? I mean, whatever it may be. Yeah, no, it wasn't. Yeah, it was more, I like to have fun with the kids. I didn't want to like corral them and, yeah, I just wanted to like make some mores and have a grand old time. But anyway, I'm totally off track here. All right, so number one was alignment of brand and message, brand message, and yeah. alignment with business model. So alignment is the key word here today. Alignment is, oh my God, Huge. alignment is everything because when you're not aligned, then you're not, you're, I mean, your momentum stops, right? It's kind yeah. Of so align, the second one is alignment, not just in what you're delivering, but and how you deliver, but it's also alignment with how you're marketing yourself. Yeah. So it's like, don't choose speaking if you can't stand speaking in front of groups. So use writing perhaps, yeah, or, like, you know. Absolutely, and part of it is that you evolve as a person as you, as you evolve in business. So who you thought your ideal client was and who you loved to serve two years ago is not the same client potentially that you love to serve today. Right. And people are scared because they've built a, a, a kind of part of my number one, right? They've built expertise around it. And they're like, now what? I have this list, I have this reputation, blah, blah, blah. But there's ways of rebranding, you know, as you know, that you like, there are a lot of people that did, there, there's a strategic way of rebranding, but like, there's ways of making you get back to that place where you feel really good about your work. So if you're feeling unaligned, there's a reason for it, identify it, and then think about the strategies to be able to get you more clear. So be back to alignment with your business model. Exactly. It's really good. Yeah. All right. Drum roll. Number three. Number three. Okay. Number three. You're going to have to help me pronounce someone's name in a second, but I'll tell you why. So number three is um, well, the barrier I see in growth is people focus on revenue versus profitability. And this kills me. Oh my God. Oh my God. I just had a client that she was like, oh my God, I'm making like 250 years. I'm like, awesome. What's your profit? And she like, like did not know, like did not know. Right. And it was kind of like, well, I have my fixed costs. I have this, I have this, you know, and, and, and she had a model where there were, there were classes, there was this, you know, and I was like, and we were looking at one of her main revenue streams. 
and it wasn't profitable guys like and and it's something that it was a consistent effort that she does every day for marketing and and from a marketing perspective in terms of her core of her business and you sit down you're like if you don't know your numbers you don't know anything about your business you could be making a million dollars i can't tell you how many brands i see that look like million dollar brands and sure they may have revenue like that but they're not profitable and and for startups it's a different world because it takes time to be profitable but when you're in the service-based space for the most of us you know and i know there's product in here there is an opportunity to be in a lean business model you definitely need help for copy for this for that like there's things that you need to build but you have an opportunity to really be lean so your margins or gross margins are a lot higher but when you're creating when there are other like if you don't know your numbers and you're just kind of like okay i have to go out and do this and do this and you're focused on the wrong thing you're and then all of a sudden you have cash flow issues like why think about it because you you're focused on the wrong things you need to like step back and this is goes back to the business model piece right it's like all right, I need to actually understand my numbers so I can see what's working in my business model and what's not, right? And what and then it's like, all right, where do I double down because it is working or if it's not working, how can I reduce expense in that area so that it makes sense if it's something that's impactful, that's making results happen, you know, or are there other revenue streams that you can add in to make it work, you know? And then again, that's like advanced but like I just feel like you need to dive in to understand where you are and where you make the most impact so that you can um, focus on your profit not uh, not the uh, revenue and there's a book out there and this is the name Mike profit first right and you know him Mike M- M- Mark is that it I don't know okay. no, I'm not gonna botch it myself <laughs> so the other part of this is profit first it's like he has this book and it's like amazing. Um, he's also the guy who did the pumpkin plan and other things. And it's like, literally, I, again, this is not like right in the beginning when you're building, you have no money, but if you're growing, there's like a certain percentage you need to put away for your own, pay yourself first, right? Mm-hmm. Everything you get, there's a certain percentage you should put away for taxes. There's a certain percentage you need to put away for expenses and different bank accounts, but he has like a whole strategy around it. Right. The goal is to focus on your profit, not just your revenue. Right. And I, and, it really kills people's businesses because they look like and they feel like, oh my God, I made 300 grand last year. Yay, six figures, you know? Awesome. You're like barely taking in anything. And when, if you're doing that and you're in the service based space, that's a problem. Like, you know, again, yep. product margins are higher. I mean, margins are lower. At the same time, they're still, you still have to be profitable regardless. So. Right. Which is why you need a strategy so you know not only where to spend your time, but where to spend your money. Absolutely. Oh my God. Yeah. So just touch on loss leader. Oh, thank you, James Malkowitz. Now, Malkowitz, I think. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I think he's a speaker, isn't he? Anyway, talk about doing something for marketing purposes versus for profit. So some we call it a loss leader, right? Yeah. So that, that could be part of your strategy is you do something to bring people into your funnel, for instance. So just touch on that so people don't think they only have to do things that are going to make them a ton of money. Okay. No, listen, look, at the end of the day, it depends on how you're nurturing your client, you know? And, and again, Jamie, it gets back to a sales funnel. It's a very strategic thing to think through, right? If, you're, if your end goal is to do, and everybody's different, right? One-on-one clients or group programs or um, retreats or selling them a product, you have to see what's going to, uh, and test, not just see, you have to test what's the funnel that's going to work to get them there. So that the initial marketing, for example, a lot of people use Groupon, even service-based people use Groupon, get them in the door so that you give them a little taste of what you do, knowing that they're going to want more. Right. And like, I'll give you an example of myself where I'm going to be, um, promoting a, a business audit and it's literally i'll do a custom audit for you i'll go into your business uh, and it's not going to take it'll take time for me it's custom but it's not a strategy right but it'll give it'll show them what is the opportunity in terms of where they can actually go next potentially right but i'm not doing a full-on strategy so my intention is that i'm going to lose money on that like i wouldn't do it for the amount that i'm going to do it for normally but i'll lose money on that so that i can get them as a strategy client Right. So, or upsell them to a program or something like that. So to your point, Jamie, I a hundred percent agree. There are loss leaders, but again, be smart about it. Forecast it. Like, what does that look like? All right. If one person did this versus 10, how many people can you actually convert on the other end? Like, you know, and 
and that's all testing and that's it gets advanced and complicated but that's where i mean i even need help for that type of stuff you know it's just thinking through the copy marissa like you know thinking through the technology to you know make that happen in a way that they feel nurtured um and and make it like and then seeing how many people actually convert, convert, convert right it's right. really good yeah excellent excellent yeah am i breaking am up? i breaking up no i hear my, i hear myself um, um, tell me, tell give me some examples of a client you've worked with that struggled with growth and how you help resolve it. Okay, I gave you one um, around the numbers. Let me, okay, one of them is interesting. This goes back to the branding message. I think I have a couple extra examples I can give you. Um, so I worked with a client, uh, her name is Gwen Gartner, and James, you would appreciate her because she's in the, I was mentioning to you, she's in the, she, um, she does organic baby clothes. All right. And um, she was actually one of my first clients years ago. And I love her. She's, she's, she's awesome. But she actually, when she started out, her marketing message was off. Like her, I wouldn't even say marketing message. There's a concept of having a stand. I don't know if you guys are familiar, right? It's like, what are you standing for in your business? Like, what's the bigger, like, reason you're doing what you're doing? Some people call it their why. Some people call it their stand. And for her, what was interesting was kind of help, like, um, protruding her growth was like, you know, she was selling organic baby clothes, but she wasn't sharing her story. And her story was so powerful, guys. It was basically, she, in a nutshell, 10 years ago, she was pregnant. One weekend, she broke up with her boyfriend. The next day, she found out she was pregnant. And the next day, she found out she had uh, third stage but breast cancer. And that happened in like this crazy trifecta. And then she ended up like beating the cancer, but through, and she's like, I can control the food. I can control, um, I can control exercising and all that stuff, but I couldn't control the clothing. And she, cause she'd done a ton of research and realized that or like cotton is the most polluted, um, material out there. Right. And so with that like concept and really thinking about like, get your story out there, but then and then what she did is became an advocate for the space of clean wear. She's like, I want to, I want to really help uh, be an educator around why it's important to have clean wear. And so she got opportunities for PR and opportunities in other areas to be more of that advocate, potentially sponsorship. And she's still building and still growing, but it gave her almost like she stood up again in her business and was like, wow, I'm here for a different impact, you know, and the clothes now, and I'm absolutely sell baby products like you know but and and tell their clothes but i have a bigger reason now. and that and so that's where the power of messaging and branding personal branding can really really help you with growth because sometimes it's like mindset jamie like you know, entrepreneurship is a lot my a, a lot of mindset right mm -hmm. that's why we do retreats there you go, there you go. It's such a mindset shift it's amazing yeah. um yeah yesterday we had a call trisha brook led a master class about how to write your big talk and one speech that she dissected was by james lucas who's on this call today and his story is what's so powerful it's not that it's not the t-shirts or the purses or the backpacks he's selling it's his story about cruelty to animals that is what's going to grab his audience. And it was, it was great to hear him read that speech and really get that message out there because he can stand on that. So maybe he'll unmute himself a little, little bit and talk about that. James, I commend you, you know, and sometimes it's hard for people to share, like, you know, and I think to me, if, and we're not talking personal branding here, Jamie, it's a whole other webinar, but with like, that is the most important thing I always tell my clients is like to get you to stand out, your personal story has to be connected to what you do every day. And it's right. not just about your career, like what you've done in your past. It's literally about your life. I focus on their life story and connect those dots so that their branding can be stronger. Yeah. Yeah. My web, my new website, which is jamiebroder.com, by the way, <laughs> really tells the story. I gave Marissa a copy of the speech that I did at the eighth anniversary party and talked to her a lot about my why. And she really captured it well. And it, my story is all about giving people voice and helping them make an impact in the world. Because when I was young, it was like dysfunction in it was crazy pants in my house to the point where I, I still remember, well, two things that are really clear are standing between my parents as they like pummeled each other 
screaming at each other. And I was like underneath them, like, stop. And another one was when I was locked in the bathroom and my mother was screaming at me through the door. And I literally wrote no pencil on the door because I had no voice. I was literally silent throughout elementary school, which I know is hard to believe. I went from silent to standing on desks and like doing whatever the hell people dared me to do. So I had this huge shift. And then I, now I'm in the middle of being more productive with my, <laughs> with my um, need to make an impact in the world. But that story is what is behind everything that I do. It's all about helping people see their potential, get the confidence, put themselves out there, make an impact, have that voice. And it's like, Oh my God, it, it took me a few years, I think, to figure it out. It was Jen Groover kept prodding at me, but why, but why? And she's the one who helped pull it out of me. It's and really it's, great. And that to me is like, wow, that's why Jamie's a visibility strategist. She, like you want your client to be so successful because you see what it's like not to have a voice. And anybody who's trying to make an impact on top of that, you're like, oh my God, this is like, we're doubling down because you have a reason for what you do. People need to know you. You know, and so that's why you work with Jamie. That's why you work with James. Like, or you buy from James. Like, you know, and I love it. I, I love it and appreciate you sharing. Thank you. You're welcome. So any other words of advice to help our, our guests grow? Uh, you know, I guess I would say start with your gut, you know, because a lot of times we're like, oh my God, I need so much help. And sometimes you, you do. Like, it's always nice to have an outside perspective looking in, right? But I say, like, I always advocate for people to, like, take an entrepreneurial sabbatical, take, go out to a hotel, like, take a night or two or three, whatever you can do, right? And start, like, where you're at right now, start saying, all right, here's where I'm at. Here's what I've learned. Here's where I want to go. And initially, I think the first part of anything I said at a business audit is important is just, like, figure out, like, what you really love about your business right now. Where are the areas that you're struggling with? Right. And figure. And then that next step will be like, all right, maybe there is an unalign, unalignment with my business model. Maybe I do need more support on this end because a lot of times we do everything ourselves. So how do I create the money to be able to afford someone like a Marissa or someone like a Jamie? Like, you know, like, what does that look like? So I like I almost like we we know in our heart of hearts, we know like there if I focused on this, it would help me. Sometimes we don't know. We might know that, but we may not know how to. <laughs> like, you know, and that's also where you need support, but start there because it will help you start to reframe how to grow because it starts with you. Um, and the last thing I'll say is I, I say it all the time. Personal growth is business growth. Anytime you can take a personal growth workshop, get on, like, listen to a podcast, like, you know, any, any of that stuff to me, it's like, you see these words behind me, that's the whole steam manifesto. I read it every day. Words inspire me because so you just have to get grounded. And it's important as an entrepreneur. Again, the new normal is crazy. So you have to be <laughs> grounded um, throughout. So you know that what you're going through is very common, very common, but you're there for a reason. And the more you focus and the more clear you are, the more momentum you're going to have, the more money you're going to make and the more impact you're going to have. Here, here. So tell us, you shared a lot of content today. Incredible. What will you be sharing when you keynote the conference, the Clear Vision Strategy Conference on May 10th? So if you're in the Warrington, Pennsylvania area or anywhere near, you should come. It's 1230 to 430. Around the globe and want to see an awesome presentation. <laughs> um, it, I'm going to be focused on a methodology that's really about growth, right? Um, it's, it's an expand methodology. If you really are looking to expand from where you are today, I'm going to share seven strategies to help you really sit back and assess where you are today. So some of this work that we're talking about, it'll be even more clear um, when we talk in May. Uh, and, you know, we'll have fun. It's going to be a little bit of, I'd love to get some hot seats. So, um, Jamie, if you can send that out, I'd love to have a quick conversation with anybody who wants to do a hot seat with me prior to. And, you know, it's coming up. So if you're interested you know, we can talk about one of your key challenges and work it through for you. I would love that. That'd be so fun. Um, so that would be another added benefit. Um, so please reach out to Jamie so you can reach out to me. And uh, yeah, I mean, my goal is to get you guys clear. So anything I can share, even if it's one insight that you take away, that's the most important thing. And then we also have Marissa, who's going to be speaking on copywriting, which again, it's the number one barrier is around unalignment with branding and messaging. So it's important that 
you listen to both of us and, and she's going to go deeper in, into a workshop style, right, Jamie? Yes, she's going, you'll have an hour to work with Marissa and actually write. Take, how you'll leave there with some written word that you can apply to either your website, your blog, or your social media. Huge. 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 Okay. We also will have three half hour breaks, one before, one after, and one in the middle. And um, during two of those breaks, you'll be able to sit with Terry Eagle three at a time to work with her on what her vision would be for your brand image. So how do you take the strategy and messaging that you've developed through with SEMA and the writing you've developed with Marissa and apply that into the visual? Because people need, you need photos that align with it as well. So she's going to just sit with you for free at the table during the break and do that with you if you wish. Um, and we have a, a sponsor for the event, SEMA, nice. Sue Geyer, Sue Geyer, the thriving entrepreneur, thrive4success.com, number four. She is going to sponsor the event. So you'll hear a little bit from Sue during, during the day. It'll be, it'll be good. And we have two vendors as well. We have Susie Carpenter will be there since it's Mother's Day. She'll be there with her mother-daughter journey she wrote about in On the Bright Side. And the other vendor is Jenny Childs from Arbonne, who's going to have pre-wrapped gifts for Mother's Day. So you can grab and go. Cash and carry. Cash and carry. Yeah. Oh, Jamie, a mother and daughter. I wonder if I can bring my seven-year-old. I think it'd be so fun to see mom in action. <laughs> I, like, is it a, what is the mother-daughter thing? What is she doing? Well, it's, it's just she has a book. Oh. that she'll be signing at the event. But she also wants to talk to anyone that visits her table just to get to know her about what her clear vision was. So it's a really good alignment with the theme of the event. Love so it. we thought that would be, would be good for her to just stand out at that event. She's one, my current um, VIP client right now. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so that when you were talking earlier about aligning with your business model and like how you deliver your services, you don't have to do, like Seema said, everything that other experts are doing or people in your field are doing that are saying, well, I do webinars and they make me this money, so you're crazy not to. Well, I hate doing webinars. It's like, I tried it. I like doing this, where you talk to the community and share information, but just doing a big pitch fest is just uh, so gross. Anyway, <laughs> um, another example came up, though. It was like Susie had asked me, uh, can you can you write and send out press releases for me for my book signings? And I'm like, actually, don't do press releases. And I sent her over to Debbie Getz, who like can kick out a press release and get it to the right people, no problem. But that's just boring to me. I don't want to do press releases. So I, what I said is, what I like to do is leverage my connections. I'll connect you with the people who can get you media. So there's some I know people on the radio. I'll connect you with the person that's aligned with your brand that would be perfect for their audience. You know, I'll leverage the connections. It's more of a text or an email or a phone call. Hey, this person would be great for your radio show. This person would be good for your podcast. This person would be good for your for your blog. Not just writing some cold press release and sending it out. That's just so not what I do. So it's like okay to say no oh my God. and to kind of explain why and maybe give a resource of somebody that will do that. <laughs> it's so powerful because this also goes with the brand alignment when when because you need to figure out what you're good at and not say you can do everything. A lot of times, again, it's the scarcity mentality of like, okay, I can do that. So I'll do it for them. Like, you know, and, and so they'll pay me and, but then you get known for five different things, like, you know, and you're not getting known for what you are actually good at. And so even the work that you produce for them may not be up to par as somebody in PR who could turn that around and get them a million hits, like, you know, so. Right. Yeah. I learned that the hard way because another, cl so another client of mine, she, just really had a block with um, software, email marketing software. So I literally took it upon myself to teach her how to use MailChimp, to create training videos, to work on her list. To, oh my God. What I was like, how did I get myself in this mess? <laughs> so not the, it's not my zone of genius. I can do it, but it wasn't fun. It wasn't the best use of my time. So eventually we brought in a virtual assistant who I explained where I was and I'm like, take it, it's yours. <laughs> oh my God, it's such a powerful example of alignment, Jamie. I love that. I love that. I have, yeah. we've all gone through it. I'm sure many of people on the phone here too. So yeah. 
Great. So how about if I unmute everyone and see if anyone has any questions? Okay. And if you want me to mute you back, just say the word, I will. It's like my phone people. I have a question. Go girl. Okay. Um, Seema, first, thank you so much for um, being with us today. I, I feel like what you gave us today was so generous in the, the breadth and the um, relevance of the content that you shared. So thank you. It's very actionable and inspiring at the same time. I greatly appreciate it. Um, my question to you is based on something that you said early on in your presentation, and the phrase really um, struck a chord with me, and that is um, you don't want to be chasing when you should be doubling down. And I feel like that's actually what I'm doing right now. Um, two weeks ago, I quit the day job that was slowly sucking the life and joy out of my existence. Um, so I am now self-employed for, for all of two weeks fully. And I find myself, while I love it and I love not being there, um, it's almost like free falling. And um, I know that everything has a learning curve to it, but I feel like I'm in a learning hairpin turn. <laughs> um, and I kind of, I don't, like last night I ate dinner at 10 o'clock at night because I was so, so hyper focused on working as hard as I could because I don't have the parameters that were showing up that I had before. And I know where I want to go, but I don't even know what questions to ask to figure out the in-between steps. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if you could speak to that a little bit. So there's one thing I'm going to do for you. There's a, I, I used to launch a program called the Transition Lab. And it was, you know, people were moving from corporate America because executives or whoever, and they want to become entrepreneurs. Because that first year out after, it's yeah. a doozy, Marissa. It's like unbelievable in the beginning. And then you're like, holy crap. And then you're like, amazing. And then you're like, holy crap. Like, it's just a very common, and you're like, you have to cleanse the corporate out of you a little bit to be able to speak the entrepreneurial language and to be productive. So I'm going to gift that to you. It's a thousand dollar program. I'm going to gift oh it. My cow. So you, that's yours for free. I'll get my OBM to send that to you directly. Cause I think it'll help you. It's nine modules. You'll start to understand like the, what you're asking me. I'll, get, I'll give you an answer now, but it's more in depth than that. Right. Um, what I would say to you, I, I guess it's like where right now, because you're going to evolve. Where do you, like, the fact that you're speaking at this conference is amazing. You're going to get a ton of visibility quickly. So commend Jamie and you for being, having that opportunity. That shouldn't be the only one you're relying on. So there's a, I'm actually working with a Red Elephant folks because I like speaking. It's, like, going to be part of my business model going forward very heavily because I want to work with other people's distribution models. I know that. And then there's opportunities to make offers that are strategic and make sense for whatever the a planner would want you to do or not do. But there's also strategies around how to make those offers that are um, really valuable to the to the clients that you have in front of you, right? So I, I, that gets more advanced. I don't even want to go there right now. But my goal for you is like, how do you want to show up? Like, where is their best area for visibility? Is it online that you feel good about? Is it through webinars? Like, just pick one for now, right? Is it like going and speaking at chamber events? And like, cause you have to build those relationships. You have to build those opportunities, right? Invisible right now for you. I mean, everything I know about you is you're an amazing copywriter. And I, what I would want to know is like, okay, what type of copywriter do you, do you do ghost blog? Like, what are you doing? Are you ghostwriting? Are you doing books? Are you doing websites? Are you doing like, what is it? Right. Because there is an art in sales copy. Um, and then there's an art in just like blog copy versus sales pages. There's an art in ghostwriting, um, books for people, you know? So it's like, wh where is your ideal place that you feel right now? Again, it may evolve, right? Mm -hmm. Cause you're a zone of genius. You could do this in your sleep, Marissa. Right. Because I want you to be able to pitch what you know best versus where you believe you want to go. That was a very critical mistake that I made early on, too. It was like, OK, I can do it all. But what do I want to pitch? What do I start with? You know, and it wasn't resonating because it was kind of like I was learning with my client. And mm -hmm. don't learn with your client. That, that would be like your my top <laughs> advice to you, because when you're learning with your client, you're not giving them the best and, and you don't feel good about it. Cause it's like, you're used to probably having a, some sort of level of, um, 
a result for your clients, corporate or not, right? Mm -hmm. But the one time you do have that, you you create a rave. Like, and honestly, I always said in the beginning, I did a lot of things at a very discounted price to get testimonials, to get like, you know, and feel good. Like, okay, I can do this. Put my processes together. Like, okay, how much do I like charge and how much time am I spending on this client? And am I totally lowballing myself because that wasn't worth whatever, five, six, seven, whatever it was, right? But you learn, but like, and then influencers are another thing, like a Jamie, right? Like the fact that you guys are connected, that's awesome because Jamie toots your horn in a grid way because you did really good for her, like, you know? And so like, again, she's a visibility strategist, but she's more than that because she's a connector. So like anytime, I mean, that's why you're connected to um, one of our mastermind people, um, Marissa, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because Jamie was like, I have the perfect person. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of how it works. uh, And a lot of times, lots of systems and other things that we can chat about, but that's where I would start. Thank you so much. I'm I'm overwhelmed with your generosity. Thank you. No, No. thank you. And that's the one last thing I'll tell you is add value, add value, add value. Give, give all your best stuff out. It's like the most important because that's how you build reputation. We're scared of that when we leave corporate. We're like, wait a minute, that's my secret sauce. But literally Mm -hmm. your secret sauce is when you can actually work with someone. That's your secret sauce. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Marissa, do you want to talk a little bit about the Florida retreat about the confidence, the pricing, and then the struggle between that and, you know, <laughs> del- delivering that value. Like you want to give more, but you want to price and, you know, you had a little bit of a struggle there with the, how to take what you learn and apply it. Oh, okay. Um, yes. I, pricing was a major, um, block for me. It was something that I really um, struggled to to value myself with. And I was challenged at the Florida retreat to really value my work um, and to charge accordingly. And I left the retreat so, so in love with the feeling of empowerment that came with it, that I attached that feeling of empowerment to charge high prices (laughs) and um i kind of fixated on that as the only way of um being profitable rather than taking a more comprehensive look at where um where you can get where your work can be valued how your work can be valued so for example um working with someone like jamie the value isn't just what she paid me for doing copywriting, but in the visibility that she provides for me. And, you know, if Jamie says I do a great job, that's going to get me more work and it already has. And I know that it will continue to do so. And I think that I had just been, I had just been so, um, I had come out of a really difficult spot and I latched onto one tiny part of the solution rather than, letting it open my heart to all of the different areas that that can be a solution so one piece of advice that i would i would give is really take a wide view um, of what value is in both what you give to people and what you receive in return for your work yeah so even if you're a speaker you're if you want to just get you may want to you may have a a price of five thousand dollars to do a keynote but you may want to do it for free. You tell them I'm going to waive my $5,000 fee because you want that client on your resume Mm -hmm. or, you know, so like, uh, what is his name? Chris Brogan. He did work for Coca-Cola. I don't know if he charged or what he charged, but getting them, then it was just a free flow. It was like every other corporation was like, Oh, you work for Coke. I'll hire you. I heard people say that to Marissa. They were like, she, Marissa wrote something like, well, I did the copy for Jamie and they're like, and or I think I wrote something like I recommend Marissa. She did the copy for my website and the person, the potential client said, that's all I need to know. I so there's, <laughs> yeah. So the point is it's not just a fixed thing. Mm-hmm. You always have to kind of be strategic on who you work with and how you work with them and things like that. Can I, I just add one thing to that? Like when you're Please. doing free work, 
So there's, there's different ways of pitching it, but I agree, like getting out in front of people is important, but making sure that your ideal client is in the audience, because the biggest issue I see, I, I have people who are like, I'm talking here and I'm doing this, I'm doing this, and they're doing a ton of stuff for free and it's fine, but they're not getting any business out of it because they're not talking to the right audience. They can't afford them. They're just talking to talk like, you know, and it's like, you want to have that secondary thing. So like if, if somebody's charging $5,000 speaking, if they have a book, that's another way. It's like, okay, well you pay for my books for a real audience member instead, you know, it's a much cheaper for them and it gets their word. Out. Or right. if the speaker is like, I mean, the organizer is like, you know what, you can make a free offer. Then it's a list building opportunity for you so that, you know, you have an assessment or something. and Everyone's like, yeah, I'd love to take that. And then you can nurture those people after into a sale. So I would absolutely, and I mean, I was just at a, I got to MC a pretty large entrepreneurial conference in New York and it's probably landing me one of my biggest clients. So it's like a, you, and it was free, like, you know what I'm saying? And I moderate a panel, but like, it was like, it was awesome. Like, you know, and so, but I knew my ideal client was in that audience, you know? Right. So, so that was marketing. And then it can be a mixture of marketing and sales at the same time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I just thought everyone has issues. I find that uh, everybody has issues with pricing. And so I thought if you didn't mind, that's why I was kind of being evasive. I was like, do you want to talk about it? We're on a live here, but okay. <laughs> Sorry. Anyone else? I'm going to unmute everyone again. And uh, if you, anyone else want to ask a question? James. Yeah. All right, James. Um, what's the first step I should take in figuring out my strategy? Uh, I would, I, I've mentioned a couple of times. It's kind of taking that audit, right? It's stepping back and saying, all right, what's working and what's not. And then also looking at where are you right now? Actually, I'll step back. I always say, what's your life plan? So write down five years from now, 10 years from now, this is how I want to live my life. Okay. I want to work from anywhere. I want to be able to do this. I want to do that. Like I want whatever that looks like unrealistic as it may be for now. Right. Because I was fear. My whole goal is to be able to create a strategy that's going to align with that because I've seen so many people that are like, I want to be flexible, but they create a, a, a business model. That's like, if I'm not in this model, it doesn't work. Right. So it's like I'm trading time for money. And so I'll never get to that end. So there's a lack of fulfillment over time, even though you're building a potentially profitable company. OK, so I'd start with life plan before business plan. Then I would ask you to do that business audit. All right. Where are you today versus that that vision? And the life vision should also include your business vision, of course. Right. So that, you know, here is a potential opportunity, the gap right now. And then do the audit of like, all right, these are the areas that I'm really good that I know are working. You could look at your numbers, you can look at your marketing strategies, but it, it, this is like, you need to dig into what you know today and then where the gaps are. And then, I mean, there's, you have to look at the key things and I'll go through this. If you come in Pennsylvania, it's like, all right, what is, what is like your marketing pieces look like? And is it telling your whole story? How are you getting the word out? Right? Like, is your marketing distribution working? What are some creative ways that are not going to be as expensive for you to get the word out? I, you're a product based company. So like your margins are going to mean everything. So I don't, I don't know what that full on looks like, but I would start with sort of a self analysis. Um, hundred percent. Do you, do you feel like you already know where you're struggling? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm struggling in everything because it's just me. So I'm doing everything from ordering product to figuring out my sales, to doing QuickBooks, to marketing. So I'm doing everything and I'm getting overwhelmed with it. So I'm trying to figure out ways to automate some of that stuff. I'm definitely talking about automation. So I, I, I absolutely, but you need, for, for product, I always say, make sure your numbers are right first. Like that is the key because if you don't price your, um, price your product properly and your wholesale price, if you're wholesaling, then like your profit margin can be so low. And then it's like, you're, you're just adding inventory, but like, even when you make a sale, it's like not a lot of money. And you need to understand that. Like, I think it's like 50 to 70% profit margin is the ideal situation when it comes to product. So I don't yeah. know what that looks like for you. But so that one, I would definitely start there with your making sure that anything you bring in the door, like you have the right profit model, profit margin in place. Um, and again, there's, there's so much James in that, in that product space. So I hear you solopreneurship is the hardest thing, but from how long have you been in business? Four years. Four years. So you've learned. 
Yeah. Like you, you've definitely learned, like, you know, and so in your audit, I'd say what has worked and what has not. I literally start there because then you might have to double down on the things that are working best for you or get the support. Because if you're four years and you're still doing everything yourself, that's a, that's a, a red flag for me. Okay. If you want to know, like, fo- like the, the one thing I'll tell you is write down all the things that make you cringe doing. Like, I hate QuickBooks. I hate this, whatever it is, right? And I always say that somebody else's job responsibilities. How do you find that person? And, you know, you got to segment those, like, it could be an online business manager. It could be a virtual assistant. It could be like, you know what? I need somebody who understands Amazon, like nobody's business. I need to hire that person to do some consulting with me. So I, I don't know what that looks like because that, is probably part of the lack of growth because you're unaligned with all the things that you have to do that you don't want to do. That's not part of your zone of genius. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I have uh, QuickBook online QuickBooks. So I see everything that comes through, but it's automatic. It's forwarded to my bookkeeper who thank God is back from maternity leave because <laughs> I think I, she probably spends five hours a month total $14 an hour, that's it. And she handles the bank rack, all the receipts, billing. It's amazing. It's such a, and I, you know, I'm a CPA, I can handle it, but I don't want to do it. Naming, it's, naming, it naming. It's, oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> I, was, I was muted. No, I said, give me her name, please. Oh, <laughs> well, she, part of it is that it's not real. She has a job. This is kind of a part-time thing. And she does it because I, I give, I let her come to events and sit in our Facebook group for free because <laughs> so, she has a little another side business, but um, I'll ask her, but I doubt she'll want any more business. I'll ask. Her. But anyway, there's people out there that will, are willing to do it. It's not, you're, it's not, doesn't have to be a big, massive expense. And also people that do it for a living, even if it's $60 an hour, like she spends half an hour a week. Like it's not a lot of money. No, the bookkeeping I know on average, it's a personal business. It's like 120. Like when you're not like, you know, with the multiple revenue streams and different platforms, it's pretty simple. The bookkeeping is worth, worth the investment. Yeah. And it's not like, oh, I need my half an hour, it, but it's, it takes up your uh, mind space, the, all that other stuff coming in. It's like, you just, it's like so great to just push it all out and not have to think about it. It's just done. It's fantastic. James. I have told James and he yesterday just underlined it, that his story about cruelty free, that's the foundation he needs to just get out there. Everything he says has to be about cruelty free. It is so powerful. That is where he should be spending his time talking about that. I think Jamie, you have a really good point. Again, I don't know where your business is at James, but if your, your personal brand is everything, right? So being visible to Jamie's point, going and talking at the right places where your ideal client is hanging out, being part of the green expos or whatever the expos are so that, but you need to be speaking. You can't just have a booth. You need to start to build your credibility in the marketplace. So your products are known for being that, you know, the vegan product or da da da. So I don't know what that looks like for you. Yeah, I mean, we do a lot of veg fest throughout the year. Like I'm going to Worcester Mass on Sunday and then I'll be in Baltimore and Philly next weekend. But now this speaking's new to me, so I'm working on doing that now and trying to get better at giving that message out. Yeah, yeah, I think the speaking, I think that's key. And then do you have like, are you on Amazon? Are you on any other distribution mechanisms? No, I just, um, because when I started, Amazon wasn't doing clothes, but I think they are now. So I need to look into that and get, get on there. I mean, there's a whole strategy behind that and A plus copy and blah, blah, blah. But like, I I don't, again, I don't know what I don't know about you, but I agree with Jamie. That's uh, definitely a core piece of it. Okay. Cool. We got mute. Anyone else? Uh, I have a quick question. Um, I love I love working with my students so much that I don't spend any time. And Marissa's laughing because I hired her a month ago, but I still haven't gotten my homework done to her because I'm so busy working with my students in my business. I love, love what I do. How do I find the time to step away to make sure my brand matches what I do? Because my brand was built 12 years ago and it's 
really, it doesn't message properly. Actually, a very easy answer. Just like you schedule your, your kids, you schedule, you schedule yourself time. Like this is where that entrepreneurial sabbatical, Misha, is going to help you so much in scaling. Because if you just said, you know what, I'm going away for two days and I'm going to go to a hotel away from everything. I'm not taking any kids the next two days. And you map it out. You already know what you need to do. This is why I say like sometimes like I'm a strategist. I'm like, I know I can help each and every one of you. But at the same time, a lot of times, you know, in your gut, like there's, if you just had time to focus on this, you would check that off of your plate. You know, someone can always help you and tweak it or whatever it is, but you would feel aligned to that part of your business. You just have to schedule it. That's like, that's the easiest answer I can give you. And you already know it, like, you know, and it's cool that you like working with the kids, but again, that's your business model. So like, I don't know what that looks like in scale. And if you have other people, whatever that looks like, you know, but for that particular question, schedule it and get out of here. And two days, two days you need Yeah. Check with Marissa to like tweak it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A lot of the, uh, the, the kickback I would get on retreats is I'm too busy. I can't go. I got too much going on. I'm jammed. I'm like, you need to go more than, oh my God. Right, Marissa? Can you talk about that a little bit about how stepping away just catapults you forward? Yeah, I think the more firmly you believe that you don't have the time to get away, the more you actually... It, you're the person who needs to. Um, there are so many questions that they're deeper questions. They involve self-reflection and it's very hard to schedule that deep dive into who am I? What's my story? What's my motivation? My, my deep seated motivation, my passion, where does it come from? Um, it's hard to schedule that in between make breakfast, pick up dry cleaning. Like you don't, okay, I've got 15 minutes to figure out the meaning of life. I mean, Monty Python couldn't even do it. You're not going to do it in 15 minutes. You know, it's just not going to happen. You need the change of scenery. You need the dedicated time and space to change things up in your mind and create an environment where you're actually able to break away from that hamster wheel that's turning in your brain and switch into an area where you can be receptive to looking inside, um, getting inspiration from new sets of people that you could be around, maybe from uh, an inspiring speaker, but really it's the change of scenery and the openness to time that allows you to tap into things that you can't tap into in your, in the daily grind. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, Marissa is talking about, was at the Florida retreat in January, which we're having again. And if it says anything, all the people that were at the retreat in 2017 signed up for 2018. 100% return. Gotta love it. Anyway, and then we're having another retreat in September on the 17th through the 19th in Middletown, New York, which is our adventure retreat, which will be um, Ropes Course, Jen Groover, Ellen Palmer, Saver and uh, Stephanie Traeger. And then we're having a little wine reception to welcome everyone at a tasting room. But I um, love Jen and I love Ellen. I speak so they're, so they're amazing. It's going to be an amazing retreat. I know. So even just stepping away for a few hours to like work on your strategy is so powerful. So that's why we're having the event on May 10th. 1230, we start networking. One o'clock, SEMA is on. Three o'clock, Marissa is on to work on copywriting. And you will walk out of there clear with a plan, hopefully with some copy, right? That's right. Yeah. So to figure out, to um, get a ticket to the, it's only $99. And for members of Success Connection, it's $79. Super cheap. Um, like I said, I put it together because Seema's work was so powerful and impactful for me. That's how I roll. I want to share experiences. Like how I came up with the retreat, went on a zip line at a course. I'm like, I need to share this. So seamless work, need to share. Anyway, go to networknowconnections.com, go to the events calendar, or go to jamiebroderick.com and then click through to Success Connection. However you want to get there, make it happen, people. Any other words of wisdom there, Seema, to close this out? You and I have the same personal stylist because we're wearing the same shirt. <laughs> words of wisdom. Um, consistency. 
you know, whatever you decide on your strategy, be consistent. It takes time. You know, entrepreneurship does not, I don't care how many people are like, oh, I made six figures in overnight. I don't believe in that. It takes time, you know, and it, you have to enjoy the process. But when you're clear on your process, you'll feel a lot better. <laughs> you know, you'll know when the ups and downs happen and it, what to expect going in, which is really helpful. Yeah. Really good. Cool. All right, you guys. Thank you so much, Seema. Thanks for joining us, Thank everyone. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye.